So yeah, so welcome to the next uh, uh, breakthrough course. Uh, this is class eight, uh, and we'll be going over composition. Uh, this is actually the second part of composition uh, before we move into further things. <clears throat> Sorry for the uh, delay. Uh, I was sick last week, but uh, we're picking up now. And um, just uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today we'll be uh, we'll be going over. Uh, we'll be going over rules and basically the golden ratio. So we'll be starting with uh, rules of thirds first, uh, rules of odds, uh, rule of space, uh, simplification, and the golden ratio. Um, so we'll start with rules of third and um, I'll give you like a little brief um, explanation on it, uh, definition. <clears throat> the rules of third uh, is, is not too complicated. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, it's just a guideline. Um, and what you know, basically, what you're doing is you're placing your points of interest um, in certain areas of the horizon. Um, you know, by placing them near one of the lines that would that would divide an image into three equal columns and rows, uh, idly near the intersection of those lines. So, uh, I'll show you the rules of thirds. So here's our rules of thirds uh, guideline. <clears throat> I just borrowed this from uh, Sketch Club. So here's our rules of thirds. All right. And uh, basically, uh, what you want is you want to <clears throat> you want to make sure that you know, in order to in order to like make your subject to make your your scene more pleasing to the eye, more aesthetically, um, you want to have like you know your Hold on a second. You want to have your subject, <clears throat> you know, fall around these areas, all right? So anywhere in these areas, it just makes it more, <clears throat> more pleasing to the, to the viewer instead of placing something like right in the middle. Or like way off to the side or something like that because if you play something in the middle it makes it like more static um, if you if you go off to the to the side it's uh it's kind of leading the viewer out of the image and that's not what you want to do you want to keep the viewer within this area um, you want to keep them tuned in uh, with what's going on in here all right so that's a that's a brief summary of it, and uh, I'll I'll show you guys some examples that I pulled up. Um, I, I did want to like uh, I, I did want to pull up some like old master paintings and some um, some modern digital artists and stuff like that that are well known, but um, I would have had to worry about copyright issues and stuff like that, so I didn't have time for it. So I just went to uh, grab some uh, free images. And um, so here's one example of uh, rules of third. And as you can see, <clears throat> the uh, image is falling along, you know, one of those intersections, right? <clears throat> so your main, your main part is, you know, hitting one of those intersections. Yeah, when you flip it around, you see the same thing. Okay. And you also have some of the landscape up back here falling on the intersection too, as well as over here. Okay. So yeah, so all this all this stuff is is just guidelines to help you um, set up your scene, uh, character, or whatever, in a more pleasing aesthetic way, so it's more comfortable to the viewer. All right. 
Uh, I'll show you another example. <clears throat> and basically, um, a lot of this, it's just going to be me. Uh, it's just going to be me um, showing you examples uh, because there's a lot to it. Um, it's pretty simple uh, for the most part, but um, instead of just going and drawing everything, then I'm just going to show you um, mostly just examples. All right, so I'll show you another one. So here we go. <clears throat> and we have the scene um, of an umbrella with what looks like some dogs that are underneath it. So your subject is... Uh, your subject is falling along the intersection, see? And it don't have to be exact. It don't have to be exactly like pinpoint on it, you know, but as long as it's like in this general area, instead of it being like right here dead in the center, um, it just makes it more, you know, like I said, just because, uh, because, you know, the the human eye, um, like the way the mind works and everything, you know, people want to see something aesthetic and pleasing. They don't want to see boring or or static or, you know, just, you know, something that doesn't look natural, all right? Um, you know, like this, this would be more of a natural setting. Um, and it just, you know, gives more interest. It gives more interest to the, to the viewer whenever they're whenever they're looking at it okay so that's another example <clears throat> also um it's it's not like you know very clear but you also see part of this this side falling on um the other intersection up here okay um at a certain you know at a at a certain point i mean it's not directly on it but it's 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 in the general um you know section and then you have like this you know this big gap right here all right <clears throat> so that's another example and uh here's another one this is more of like a painting <clears throat> And uh, right here, you have her. Like uh, once again, you, like you have her head right here on the intersection. Okay. <clears throat> and you have her falling along the line. All right. You also have uh, the lamp kind of hidden this area too, and this is actually balancing out the uh, the subject material. It's balancing out the scene. Okay. So that's so there's another example. And here's another painting. Um and it can be anything from complicated to you know, it can be anything from like a real complex painting to something simple, you know. Uh here's Another example, um, just a, a little bird on a branch. Um, the bird is also falling on the intersection. Like I said, you don't have to hit these intersections directly. But see how he's falling along the line? And he's off to the side. He's not like directly in the middle. <clears throat> uh, a lot of times, the middle section would mostly apply to characters um, or like the um, the pyramid um, uh, the pyramid effect basically um, a character if it's like a character profile or a portrait or something like that that's when that's when you know things would generally fall in the middle but you know these you know these are like rules but it's not laws so you know rules are meant to be broken right but you want to try to you just want to you know try to stay um you want to you want to try to stay you know in the realm of trying to you know make a pleasing subject you know um 
you don't want to you don't want to complicate things too much for the viewer you don't want to uh to make it too chaotic because then they get confused and you know it's like you know nobody wants to you know you don't nobody wants to see it uh they get confused and they just want to look away so you want to try to make things um simple and this is really what this is for um all these guidelines all right so uh so that's basically the rules of third um in a nutshell uh it's not too complicated uh it's pretty simple uh i actually use this a lot um in my work um i always uh try to plan out before i before i do anything <clears throat> and those are some examples of that uh so now um i'll go ahead and take any questions if you guys have any um and then i'll go ahead and move on to the next one <clears throat> okay, if, if nobody has any questions, then um, how do you plan out with using this rule? Um, as far as like what? As far as as far as the as far as like the layout of the pattern or or what? Like what do you what do you mean? <clears throat> Basically, like whenever I'm drawing, whenever I'm doing a sketch, um, I try to plan out everything in the composition. Uh, if you had an ideal to draw out, do you just draw a rough sketch under the grid? Uh, yeah, you can do that. You can draw it under the grid. Um, if you like, for me, like a lot of times, I already have, um, I already have my ideal um, in mind of where I want the placement to be. Um, but yeah, you can use the grid as a guideline. That's a, that's a great, you know, that's, that's a great source, um, to utilize. Uh, for me, I already have it pretty much in my head of where I want things to fall. And, um, really, you know, it's just putting it around, you know, putting your subject around this area or this area or up here or something like that. Um, say like if you have it, if you have the, uh, the rules of third turn this way, you know, then you know you generally want your subject to fall around you know in these areas okay um like i said don't have to be pinpoint just you know in the general area you know even if it falls in like around in, in here or in here <clears throat> okay a lot of times when i'm drawing um and i have like you know a character um, you know, uh, a lot of times I'll place my character up here and I'll, sometimes I'll have another one down here, you know, kind of like the David and Goliath, um, thing. Okay. <clears throat> but it applies to anything, um, characters, props, scenes. So. All right, so I'll go ahead and move on to the next one, <clears throat> and the next one will be uh, we'll be discussing is uh, uh, the rule of odds. Uh, this one isn't too isn't too uh, complicated either. Um, basically, the rule of odds, the explanation for the rule of odds is uh, um, this this is what it says. It says states by framing the object of interest with an even number of surrounding objects. All right, it becomes more comforting to the eye, it's more pleasing to the viewer, um, and it's more natural if you have, like, basically you have uh, your main subject, but then you have other um, surrounding uh, subjects that are not uh, necessarily um, uh, symmetrical to your main subject. So more like asymmetrical or, you know, um, 
uh, basically like an odd number an odd number of subjects is more pleasing than an even number so if you have like an even number of things going across the screen um, it, it's not going to be as natural as if you had an odd number of um, things going across the screen and I'll show you I'll show you an example <clears throat> so here's two examples I pulled up um, here's one okay uh, <clears throat> and as you can see the boats are in different layouts all right you have this one up here uh, and it looks different too. It has um, like the flag is pointing up, right? Um, this area is different. It's on this side, um, on the left side. Okay. It also has like um, some little, I don't know, uh, little design right there on the boat, or maybe that might be another boat. I don't know. <clears throat> but then over here, you have this one, the the little oar or whatever, whatever that is in the front. It's on. It's like on the. It's like on the right side, right? Plus the boat is smaller. Plus the boat has something coming off of it. So it's just um, placing things in you know a more natural order than as if than if you had like say like a boat right here and then a boat right here and then a boat right here and they're all the same you know they're on the horizon they're all the same length the same size everything okay but if you but if you took these boats and say like um, you have like a sail going this way and then one going this way okay and then maybe like one that's tilting down or something like that all right <clears throat> yeah to break up symmetry exactly okay even the boats in the background, you know, they're broken up. This one has more brightness on it, okay? As this one's more dark. So anything can really be played in that to, uh, you know, to break up the evenness, to break up the odds. Even the simplest thing can break it up. Um, so yeah, so, um, so that's basically uh, rules of odd. Uh, it's not too, not too complicated. Um, I'll show you another another example. All right, so here we have um, people, okay, and as you can see, <clears throat> each one's doing a different thing, right? This lady's looking down. This guy's looking way down. She's got a different hat on than he does. Not to mention that she's female. And he's a male. She's got a different shirt on. He's got a green. This guy's looking straight. You know, each one of them's got different movement in their in their walks. Okay, the scene blurs back. Um, just all kinds of different factors. Uh, each one has a different color shirt on, so they're not all the same color. Um, <clears throat> you know, these guys have two different hats. You know, each all of them have different hats. You know, and uh, yeah, it creates variety. Uh, same thing with the trees up here. You see the trees. Um, you see how they're like <clears throat> they're going up. I mean, really, you wouldn't pay too much attention to the trees uh, more than the people. But this is just another example. Um, you have different variations in the trees. You got that one shorter. This one a little bit taller. And this one's a little bit taller and skinnier. Then you got this one wide, and so on and so forth. All right. So it also adds repetition, and um, uh, you know, it just it keeps things from you know being too even. You know, you got these trees down here. Okay. You got these out here. You know, it just breaks up everything, which is which is good. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, so uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, just uh, keep that in mind uh, whenever you're whenever you're working on a piece. Um, if you you know, not to make things too static or too you know um, even, too symmetrical. 
so that's basically all that's that's saying. <clears throat> uh, do you guys have any questions on that? Exactly. It's like science and art. And I gotta tell you, man, before I before I even started doing this class, I was doing some uh, research myself. And I, I would also suggest that too is to for you guys to look it up yourself, man, because you'll find some really fascinating stuff. Especially when I get into the golden ratio. Oh my God, um, <clears throat> that is like one of the the greatest anom anomalies that you know comes you know all the way back from the Renaissance. Um, you know, and it's in you know pretty much everything you see, and uh, it's just amazing how everything just connects um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, here, in a, here in a little bit but uh, do you guys have any questions on this part <clears throat> I just find this stuff so fascinating uh, and very interesting Okay, so if nobody nobody has any questions, then uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so the next one we'll discuss is the rule of space. And once again, this one's not too complicated either. Um, this one's pretty simple. Um, I can only really find like one good example as far as royalty royalty free images go, but I'm sure there's a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> but this is one that I found, and uh, let me go and give you the let me go and give you the um, explanation. Uh, the rule of space applies to your artwork. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, mostly used in photography, advertising, and illustration. Uh, you know, basically it's just pic picturing objects to, to which the artist wants to apply the illusion of movement uh, or which is supposed to create a contextual bubble in the, viewer's, in the viewer's mind. This can be achieved, for instance, by leaving white space in the direction the eyes of a portrayed person are looking. Um, or when picturing a runner adding white space in front of him rather than behind him to indicate movement. So, basically, <clears throat> um, it's like you're leading the viewer's eye, okay? Uh, with, you know, with this example, for instance. You're leading, oops, let me, uh, you're leading the viewer's eye this way. All right, you're not leading them this way, okay? <clears throat> so, if we were to put this guy over here, then he would have this big gap behind him with really nothing, okay? Unless, of course, you put an object over here or something to balance it out. But if you put him over here, then what's he doing? He's leading the eye out of the image, right? Okay, so with this in mind, you're actually staying in the image and you're given that sense of movement as well. Because as you see him running, um, you know, you automatically feel as if he's running this way. And you feel that he has a lot of space in between him to run through. Okay, uh, kind of like, um, like a marathon or, um, you know... Um, where you have some racers, or or, or like a um, um, what, do you, what do you call it, like a jock race, jock a horse race, um, you know, you have them, you know, you have them start at the, the starting line, and they have this big track in front of them, right? <clears throat> but um, this can also be applied to other things too, not just uh, not just people running, but it can also be applied to uh, Let's see. He also has a light tone on his front side and column is lighter on side towards him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but uh, this could also be applied to, um, here, I'll, I'll draw a quick example. 
Um, I don't know if you guys remember when I talked about implied lines uh, in one of the classes. Uh, implied lines is basically hidden lines that are directing the viewer's eye um, to move the viewer around the image. Okay, so, but this could also be applied to, say, if you have a person standing here, right? And they're looking this direction. All right, that's also giving the sense of, okay, well, they're looking at something over here, so something's going on, all right? Then they're also, their eye, and the eye can connect with an eye, right? The, the, like the human eye knows the human eye. If you see a human eye on a picture, then you know what it is, all right? And you know what the human eye does. You know the human eye is looking. And wherever the human eye is looking, then you're, instant, you're instinctively going to look where that eye is looking. All right? If that person is looking this way, you're instinctively going to look that way as well. Okay? So they're looking into the image. So that's leading the viewer's eye into this area. All right? And whatever's going on in there. Okay? Now, if the eye was looking um, this way, then what's it doing? It's leading the viewers um, out of the image okay so that's just I mean that's like a little trick too um, <clears throat> as far as you know moving the viewer around and uh, keeping them you know keeping their interest um, <clears throat> inside the uh, the picture <coughs> sorry I'm choking there <coughs> uh, but yeah um, let's see another another um, i give you another example of this, um, since I was only able to find one example. Let's say you have like, um, uh, let's, let's do like a plane. Here, let's, uh, let's have a plane going this way, all right? And you automatically relate with the plane because the plane is going with speed, right? So which way is the plane going? <clears throat> it's going this way, right? So you have this space assuming movement. Yeah, pop, yeah, exactly, Poppy. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, I mean, you don't have to, uh, you don't generally um, have to apply this. This is just basically, um, it's, it's basically tools that you can use at your disposal. Um, like I said, it's not law, um, you know, it's just a rule. It's a rule that, you know, is there that has been proven to help with an image. It's been proven to help with um, a scene to make it more, um, you know, to give it more life, um, basically. Okay? <clears throat> so that's... Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, basically rules of space. Um, so really, anything that you have pointing in a general direction, whether it be an object, a person, <clears throat> okay, hold on a second. Uh, I'll take questions in a second, guys. Um, but uh, do you guys understand this, first of all? And then I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and answer the questions. Does everybody understand this? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and answer. The, I'll go ahead and answer the question. Um, if your direction of travel is cut off by the edge of the sketch, it gives a sense of not knowing of sudden stop the open space implies free movement exactly that's exactly what that's exactly what this is about because you don't want to have like a dead stop like you don't like for instance you don't want this plane you don't want the plane over here because where's the plane going <laughs> you know what I'm saying there's it's like it's leading the viewer out of the image you want to keep the viewer in this area 
as much as you can. Okay. So, yeah. So I mean, if you had the plane, you know, going towards, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Good, good, a uh, good example for yeah, exactly uh, a journey. Um, yeah, because if the plane is al already to the side of the canvas, then you know what's going on over here. You know, unless there's like another plane coming or something like that. But um, if there's just an open nothing, you know, then you're pretty much closing your viewer off in this area right here. And you're not giving them anything over here. So, so yeah, so that's, that's a good trick to use whenever you're, um, and I also use this a lot in my own images, my own sketches too. Um, it's a great way to, uh, to uh, give the illusion of movement. Um, as suggested, and uh, just like Fleur said, to show the journey, to show the story, <clears throat> uh, to move the viewer around. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can put it that way. All right, so since you guys got an understanding on that one, and like I said, man, please, you know, research this, you know, look it up yourself, you know. Um, uh, check it check into it. I'm serious because there, there's some really fascinating stuff and you'll really Once you apply it to your work, you'll you'll find um, You know, you'll find you know a great deal of interest in just in your own work, you know, and you might you might uh, You might uncover different avenues, you know stuff that you can do that you didn't think you could do before um, and it really helps to to uh, help move your art um, and tell a story, okay? Even with the most simplest art, um, you know. <clears throat> uh, that, that one I don't know, Melanie. <laughs> I can't answer that one because I don't live in the other country, so I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> Probably. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move to uh, the next one, uh, which is uh, simplification. Uh, this one's uh, generally um, pretty simple, too. Uh, as the word states, simplification. So let me pull up the term. <clears throat> yeah, this stuff's very fascinating to uh, to look at. Knowledge is power, guys. Knowledge is power, man. That just goes without saying. Um, it's very fascinating to look at, look this stuff up, man, and uh, just research it. And then try to apply it to your own work. That's what I try to do all the time. I try to, you know, take these rules and see how they can be, you know, effective, you know, with my own stuff. <clears throat> uh, okay, so now we're moving on to uh, simplification. Uh, with simplification, uh, basically, um, all right, this, this, is, this is what the explanation is. Uh, images with clutter can distract from the main elements within the picture and make it difficult to identify the subject. All right. By decreasing the extraneous content, the viewer is more likely to focus on the primary objects. Clutter can also be reduced through the use of lighting as the brighter areas of the image tend to draw the eye, as do lines, squares, and color. Um, in painting, the artist may use less detail and defined brush brushwork towards the edges of the picture, removing the elements to the focus of the object, taking only the needed components. Um, <clears throat> basically, simplification is making your main subject pop out more than anything else. Um, and you can achieve this through different through different means, uh, through contrast, colors, value, uh, all this stuff. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you some uh, brief examples. 
All right, so here's one example. All right, as you can see, there's some space in here too that I just discussed. See the space? Oops. Yeah. <clears throat> see the space that I just discussed? See the butterfly looking this way? Now the butterfly is a little bit further out, but still, it's still giving that, that sense of movement, right? It's pointing the viewer this way. Just the butterfly looking that way. Um, okay. <clears throat> it means something's going on over here. You know, nothing's really going on over in this way, in this direction. But anyway, so let's um, talk about the simplification. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if the butterfly was to fly, then yeah, it would. Yeah, it would go that way. It wouldn't go this way. If it did, it'd be leading the viewer out, right? <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so yeah, for simplification, see how all this is blurred out? See how the background's all blurred out, including the stem? Okay, and see how, see how much the butterfly pops? Like, it just instantly pops. If I move it further back, you can really tell. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> and don't uh, don't pay any attention to the border or anything. All that is is, uh, is I took a photo. But um, but yeah. So see how the butterfly is popping though. It's that's your main subject. So you want it to read the most. All this other stuff is second to none. It's it basically it just complements what's here, what's going on here. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, emphasis and uh, focal and all that stuff that I that I covered, um, you know, that I went through on critiques and all that. Um, <clears throat> even the stem itself is blurred out. It's not as blurry as the background, but it's blurred enough to where it's not distracting from your main subject. Uh, even the flower, if you can, if you can see. There's more contrast up here, all right? Also, not to mention the flower, each one is pointing up to the butterfly in a way. It's pointing out to the scene, while the rest of it in the back, <clears throat> that's also leading the viewer's eye. While the rest of it back here is kind of more of a flat, like more of a flat value, or more like... Um, it's it's caught in the shadow, so everything that's popping is all this right here. Okay, but that that's just a minor detail. That's um, <clears throat> the the flower is just a minor detail. The main thing is you don't want your background because the flower is actually part of the butterfly, but you don't want the flower to take away from the butterfly either, because the butterfly is obviously your main subject. Okay. Uh, the main thing is the blurred background and like the blurred stem. Of course, you don't want that to distract um, from your main subject. Okay, if it was too detailed back there, it would be way too much, um, and that would take away from your main subject. <clears throat> okay, I'll show you another example. All right. So we have these two little cowgirls uh, in a field, okay? <clears throat> and even if I like pull it back, you can see that they, you know, clearly pop out in comparison to the rest of the scene, all right? And that's what you want. <clears throat> that's what you want. You want your main subject uh, to be the center of focus, to be the thing that reads the most. All this other stuff, it just complements, okay? Uh, even the bright light right here, um, it kind of surrounds, um, even the horizon, um, it surrounds this area to where it makes them stick out even more, okay? Uh, even the patterns in their dresses. You know, she's got like, uh, 
little, this one's got like uh, different color flowers. She's got like more like polka dots. Um, but every, like all the other stuff uh, really applies to it as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's diffused. <clears throat> You have more contrast also in this area where you have less contrast and like in the grass, as you can see, it's more shadowy back here. Um, it gets a little bit lighter up here where it gets really, really bright up here. Okay. <clears throat> but it doesn't detract. It doesn't take away from, um, you know, the two girls standing in the field. <coughs> <coughs> And uh, plus over here, you know, it's a little bit more dim. <clears throat> so yeah, so I mean, it just, it all helps them uh, to read more. Because you're not interested in what's going on around them. You're just interested in them. Now, if there was like, say, like a house <clears throat> or something, then that would be your second point of interest, okay? Or a horse or whatever. Um, that would be your second point of interest, but your main interest would be these two, all right? And perhaps you could even, uh, you could even move the, the image over, um, you know, as far as like rules of thirds go and stuff like that. But I mean, it's, it's still a great image. Um, <clears throat> plus they have kind of like the pyramid thing going on, um, They kind of have the uh, the rules of odds going on, with the exception of there being like another person. Um, they have different things going on. They have like, um, you know, different hats, uh, different different color hair. Like they're not the same person standing next to each other. They're not the same height. You see, they both got different heights. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of things that just you know adds more interest and more more focus and um yeah simplification so so yeah so that's another example um you guys have any questions on that you understand that <clears throat> and this can be achieved in you know with depth of field um geometry um, symmetry uh, just uh, creating movement uh, all kinds of techniques all right <clears throat> uh, like I said man you know this is a very uh, this is a very brief um, a brief overview of this but I would definitely recommend um, looking into this stuff yourself uh, just research it um, don't you know don't lean on what I'm talking about, but you know, definitely research it yourself. Um, it's very fascinating too. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now I'll move on to one that, uh, even myself, I find a little tricky sometimes. So I hope, I hope I can explain this to where you can understand it. And that is the ever so popular golden ratio. <clears throat> All right. So with the golden ratio, um, I'll give you a brief ex explanation on it. Uh, <clears throat> let me see here. Okay, let me uh, pull up the um, let me pull up the uh, the diagram. All right, so here's the diagram. All right. <clears throat> And uh, also, there's like a spiral that goes with it too. Hold on, let me, uh, let me uh, get something real quick. There we go. So there's a spiral, uh, uh, or the golden spiral, which is the little seashell-looking thing. Um, 
Uh, the golden ratio is also known as the golden mean, the um, divine proportion, um, the golden rule. It's got all kinds of different names that goes with it. Um, mostly people just call it the golden ratio. Um, a lot of people use this in their work, um, all the way from the Renaissance uh, to now. Um, and a lot of people have their own theories on it as well. I'm not going to get into all that. So if you want to do the research on it, then, then uh, feel free. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to give you the uh, brief explanation on it. Uh, so the golden ratio basically describes the perfectly symmetrical relationships between two proportions. <clears throat> um, approximately approximately uh, is equal to, um, well, it's, it's the same thing as, uh, as pi which is 1.618 and I'm not going to get all into mathematics and everything because math is not my thing so um, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible <clears throat> uh, approximately, is equal, approximately is equal to a ratio of 1 to 1.61 um, uh, it's a large rectangle consisting of a square which which sides which with sides equal in length to the shortest length of the rectangle in a smaller rectangle. Um, all right, so what that's mean, what that's saying is, <clears throat> you have. Hold on. Okay, so what that's saying is you have this. Let me get. You have this rectangle, okay. This one big rectangle right there. Then you have a square, or then you have another rectangle within that. So here's your other rectangle. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> Can you still hear me? Okay. Alright, so you got the rectangle, and then you got another rectangle um, uh, within that, okay? Alright, then if you flip it, check this out. You got the same thing. You got a rectangle and a rectangle within a rectangle. Alright, then if you flip it again, same thing. You got a rectangle and a rectangle within a rectangle. Alright? So that is the golden ratio. Um, that is in its simplest form. <laughs> uh, but it does get more complex. Um, at the same time, you have, you have a square within this, right, within this rectangle. So it applies all the way around as well. Another square, another square, and another one, and another one, and then so on and so forth. It keeps on going. <clears throat> yeah, and that's more the complex um, way, that's, that's more the complex way that it's done um, with what, what Fleur said, but um, uh, then you have the golden spiral, okay? And basically the golden spiral is um, generally what's found in uh, nature all around, okay? Uh, that's why it's so, it's so popular. Uh, because the golden spiral can be found in, every, in ev everything from seashells to uh, hurricanes to flowers to spiral galaxies. Uh, even the human ear, even the human ear is like a, is like a golden spiral. Um, if you look at an ear, um, the way that it spirals around, it's like, you know, it's, 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 you know, just like this, just like this explanation. Okay. Other things also apply to it too. Um, found in life, but, um, <clears throat> Thank you.
but uh, as far as the um, the golden ratio goes, um, you know, it pretty much applies to everything. It's just uh, basically uh, what it is is it's a, it's like a um, um, a pleasing like aesthetic uh, proportions. Um, so sort of like the rectangle to the to the square. Okay, think about it like this. All right. If you got a if you got a face, think about how symmetrical the face is, how how like uh, proportionate the face is. You have the ears that are directly across from each other, right? And this is where the stuff gets really fascinating, man. If you think about it, all right. This is going to give my thoughts on it, but um, yeah, exactly. Beauty um, is set on it too. But uh, think about where everything aligns. Think about where it, it falls into place. Your nostrils. Think about where your nostrils are like right directly across from each other. Your eyes are directly across from each other. Think about where your nose falls, your mouth. Um, everything falls symmetrical down uh, the facial area. Okay? Um, just everything. Um, how we have like, uh, you know... Another example that was given for uh, the golden ratio um, is like your your uh, fingers. Uh, you think about your fingers from your fingers to your palm to your wrists. It's all like a square and rectangles, right? Um, from the tip of your finger, you know, and it's all in segments. From the tip of your finger to the next sec uh, segment to the next, and and then so so far. Um, um, as, as it goes down, you know, like as it goes further down, it just all falls in line, right? Um, you know, we all have two legs, we all have two arms, stuff like that, you know? Um, <clears throat> it's just very fascinating. I, I would definitely, man, I, I would I would definitely uh, check out this stuff. Um, but, uh, but not getting too far off the bases, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you some examples. Uh, first, I'll show you an example of a painting that I found <clears throat> that uh, you can apply the golden ratio to. But there's so many. There's so many different things that you can apply it to uh, with the golden spiral, too. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and keep this up. So, I'll pull up this painting. Actually, let me drag this over it. Alright, now see how instantly... The painting falls on the golden the golden ratio, the golden spiral. See where the tip of the um <clears throat> see where the and a lot of this stuff just comes natural. I mean, seriously, it just comes natural. You don't even it's like you don't even think about it. You just do it. And you're like, if you place one of these on there, then a lot of times you might be surprised where your you know your main image, uh, your main subject falls. So basically, like, this is pretty much the main subject. Um, this is the, the main, um, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but say, like, okay, the tower is the one thing that's sticking out from the rest of this. I mean, yeah, it has, like, um, a difference in each house going this way. But the tower is the one thing that... Um, it's touching the golden ratio, right? It's the one thing that's falling into that spiral. And that's just really cool. And if you think about, like, also how the, the viewer's eye moves, look at how the spiral is leading. It's leading the viewer's eye, okay? From the grass to the tree, you know, through the clouds. I mean, it's not like obvious down, then you can, you know, but if you break it down, you can see it. <clears throat> it's just really fascinating stuff. I love, I love um, doing this stuff. I love like, you know, researching it and using it and everything. <clears throat> um, also, uh, if you apply the, um, Yeah, a lot of artists don't even realize that they use this in their own work. 
but they do. Um, if you apply the golden ratio, if you look at these houses, um, this one for instance, all right, it's in the rectangle. Then you have the little gap right here in a rectangle. 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 Then you have down here the um, the water. Up here, the sky. It's all rectangles. And then in the center, it's all it's like it's like squares, right? It just blows my mind, man. This stuff is just crazy, dude, um, how it works. Um, if you look at famous paintings, um, even with the houses themselves, <clears throat> uh, even with the houses themselves, you have like a, like kind of a rectangle right or a square, and then you got a rectangle right there, okay? Like a square, a rectangle, all right? like a rectangle okay it's just oh man it's just it's just it's just amazing dude I, I don't know man I just get I just get blown away by that it's, it's such a mystery to me like how like you know people came up with this but it works I mean it really does um, and you can see it yeah and every you know every famous artist pretty much every famous artist paintings, especially from the Renaissance, uh, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, you know, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, I actually show you one of my sketches that I used this on. All right. This is a, a Halloween sketch that I did. I just wanted to uh, throw this up as an example of the, um, the golden ratio. Okay. Plus, uh, plus the other um, stuff that I covered as well. <clears throat> but, um, so let me uh, transform it. All right. Now, see? See what I'm talking about? Um, as, oops, let me see. See how it leaves the viewer's eye? See how these people are looking up at the uh, the um, the pumpkin creature? Yeah, also movement in space. There's even a gap between these two guys, between the main subject. Um, I Yeah, I really pretty much uh, applied everything. <clears throat> uh, the rules of third... Um, you know, you got the, um, the rules of third up in here too. Um, I can throw that on there too. I'll show you. <clears throat> so we got the rules of third. The main subject is falling on the rules of third. Right here. <clears throat> You even got these guys kind of following on the rules of third, okay? And he's look, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly what, like what I discussed. He's looking in the direction, um, and he's giving that illusion of movement, okay? Same thing with this guy. He's giving that illusion of movement, all of them. Except for this guy back here, but he's not very important. He's just complimenting this guy. Okay, same thing with this guy, uh, the guy, the one that's in the, um, the far distance, um, he's complimenting this dude, okay, the main, uh, the main subject, all right, even with these, uh, this little silhouette down here of these people sitting on the, um, uh, whatever it is, stru uh, this structure, see how I have this little girl pointing up at the pumpkin dude? At the, uh, I don't know why I can say I'm pumpkin dude, the pumpkin creature, and they're all kind of like looking in this direction. It's bringing the viewer's eye back to him. Same thing with this guy. Um, he's looking 
at the pumpkin guy. His hands are pointing. The only thing that's not pointing is this thing right here, but. <clears throat> yeah, and then there's like, also um, another thing that um, that you can see is the, uh, the, sim uh, the uh, simplification too. See how I got all this more sketchy? All this is more silhouette, right? He's more sketchy. Um, your main, your eye is directly um, drawn to this area right here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, depths and emphasis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I really, I really aim to apply that, apply pretty pr all those rules. Uh, to my own work and this is just an example um, now it doesn't happen all the time like I said the rules are meant to be broken so if you can get away with it um, and it doesn't take away from your piece then yeah go for it you know you don't have to apply every single rule but it does help it does help add more to your image <clears throat> um, if you see also have uh, the um, the rules of odds um, two, I have it down here with the pumpkins. See how they're all facing in different directions? And some of them are more faded than others. And, um, let's see, what else? These guys, rules of odds. Alright, see how they're different? You got the little girl, then you got the guy, then you got her. Um, sitting on the end, these guys too, all different. Everything. Everything is different. There's nothing that's exactly the same. Even even the uh, proportion or the, the size difference from this guy to this guy to this guy. That's all rules of odds. Same thing with him. <clears throat> you know, so that's, a, that's applying all that. Um, even this guy and this guy back here. And you can barely see him, but that's good because he's not important. What's important is him. Then you have your uh, your focal, your main focal. Then you have your your secondary right here. Here, let me. Uh, you have your main focal. Then you have your secondary guy. The guy that's controlling him. And then you move on down to this guy. Then these guys, and it just moves around. It moves around the scene. Okay, <clears throat> and everything's you know pretty much implemented. Then you have the movement; they're all going this way, so it tells the story too. So does this make sense, guys? And that's pretty much it um, on uh, composition. Um, I feel that I can go over with you <clears throat> and yeah whenever you look whenever you're uh, doing your own stuff whenever you're uh, you know working on your own scene or character or whatever um, think about this stuff you know lay down a, uh, a game plan before you start working uh, even if you have to do like uh, um, yeah you're welcome um, um, even if you have to do like uh, thumbnails, which is a great idea too, lay down some thumbnails, you know, of, you know, where you think you want the scene to go. Um, plan it out, you know, that's what a lot of artists do. They, uh, even photographers and, and uh, people that, um, you know, directors, they, they plan out the scene before they even play out the scene. You know, they plan out the, the grid work, <clears throat> um, you know, with uh, the composition. <clears throat> Actually, Fleur, a lot of this stuff comes natural. Um, even if, even if you're not planning it, um, I tell you what, you guys go back and look at your own stuff right now, like or you know after the class or whatever or whenever you want to, 
look at your own work and see if any of this applies to your own work. And you'll be surprised that if not all of it, then at least some of it applies to your own work and you didn't even, and you didn't even know it. That's what's so amazing about it. <clears throat> um, because you might have some of this already applied to your work and you're not even aware of it. So then now that you've seen a brief um, discussion on it, um, you have a, you know, you have a, you have a good understanding on it. Um, I hope that you can actually go back and look at your own work and apply it to your own work. If it's not already there, you know, or you can see that you already laid it down, um, on your own stuff. <clears throat> but like I said, you know, this is not all like, uh, you have to do this, you know, it's just rules. It's, it's, it's just rules, um, guidelines basically to, uh, um, to make, uh, you know, your picture more aesthetically pleasing and, um, more comfortable to the viewer. <clears throat> But yeah, I really, like, I really hope this helps, guys. I know it's really helped me out a lot um, since I um, got into this and I started studying it more and just doing research and, you know, and applying it to my own work. But, um, I mean, that's all I got.